Hello everybody, it's me, Laura, and today I thought I would do an office tour. An office tour, an office tour, an office tour, an office tour. I'm gonna show you where I do the thinking, the typing, the staring off into spacing. This is where all that super important stuff happens in this little room in the back of the house that I'm currently using as my office. Do I always write in here? No. Do I often sit in bed and write? Yes. But when I wanna actually pretend like I'm gonna write, do I come in here and do it? Mostly. Sometimes do I, instead of writing, go on the internet and my phone and not really do the writing? Yeah, this that's what offices are for. So let's just dive on in to the office tour. I don't know what this is, but it's happening. Oh yeah. <laughs> of the writing desk portion of the room. You'll see I have my fabulous whiteboard, my two unused pin boards, some art prints, and then the desk and all accoutrement therein. I put this chair here because there was nothing there and it looked weird. Let's continue, shall we? So this portion of the desk where my laptop currently is, is where I originally had my second computer that was about 15 years old, I was planning on using as a second monitor, but those dreams came crashing down. Basically, here's where I'm now gonna do my laptop writing. Um, so I have my little desk mat so I can have a nice smooth surface if I have to do any notebook writing. I have some glasses, because I always need a spare. I have a hot cocoa and scream Halloween candle burning. It is chocolatey and delicious. Then I have my phone always by my side. I have these great little plants, pop-up sticker crafty doodads right here. They're pretty cute. And then I have this little seashell here also. All gifts from a loved one, so it's nice to have around while I'm doing my work. Then back here, as you'll see, I have this little white package as some stationery. I have my little cup full of writing utensils. I got this cute little matching copper desk set, even though I don't really need all the things that it provides me with. And this basket I want to hang on the wall, that big that big one with the notebooks in it, but I'm afraid of gouging holes in the wall because in putting up most of the things on this wall, I gouged holes. So that's kind of a notebook holder and holds little progress stickers, stamps, uh, has something to clean my laptop with, and any notebooks and file folders go in there. Next to that, I have my water bottle and this little ruler that says rulers of the kitchen and has Julie Child at the top, um, has famous, famous chefs on there. This is a post-it holder that I instead have filled with wires for my various electronics, chargers, things like that. And then I have this letter holder, which holds da 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 letters. And next to that, I have my Kindle plugged in, which is good for breaks for reading. Behind that, I have some tarot cards I never really use because I don't know how to do it and they're not real tarot cards. I don't think it's not like a true set. They're just mostly cute uh, illustrations that I enjoy looking at. Um, I have a little box with some jewelry in it, some more stationery behind there. Another seasonal candle. I believe that's a Christmas candle back there. I think there's a rule once you turn 30 you become obsessed with candles where you had no interest before. Suddenly you want lots of candles. At least that's what happened to me, or maybe it's 35. Then I have this fun little calendar flipper so you can go and set the date day to day and it makes me feel like the day has begun when I change the date before I begin writing. Behind that is a stapler that I never really use because I don't have a printer set up, but when I have papers to staple, you best be believing I'll be using that stapler. Then up here we have these pin boards. I had initially wanted to put inspirational writing images on them. I used to work in a stationery shop and we put cool 
designs or cute little color schemes and things on the wall so I wanted to do something similar like a mood board for my writing so I have to do that but I need the printer then above that I have these two prints one is this cow on an armchair which is just delightful and then next to that I have this woman who is asleep having a picnic and she's surrounded by one two three four five six dogs so that's basically the dream so that would be incredible um, if I could one day achieve that this is my whiteboard. It currently has my writing progress. Sometimes I do to-do lists or things I want to remember to take care of in edits, but for March I thought I would do this progress report so you can see I've been doing pretty well. I had these little clouds slash turds mark days where I didn't do writing and then I feel like a cloud or a turd. Then we will coast over from the desk area to the reading area, or at least the area where I pretend like I'm going to do reading. It never looks like this because it's usually a dog bed, which is how it should be really. But I like to imagine one day I will read. In this little cot, I've turned into a couch. I've shoved three pillows up against this closet area, threw a blanket over the thing, made it into a little couch. Do note the curtain doesn't really stay open on its own and is shoved into the top drawer that storage area. There's Gudetama over on the right. There's some books I put there purely for decoration. I'll show you what I'm actually reading on my Kindle and what I'm listening to on my dog walks through my little phone and headphones doodad. So the next thing I'm looking forward to reading is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. So Invisible Girl is about a girl who goes missing and then in the neighborhood there's a creepy man who was a teacher accused of sexual misconduct, which he strongly denies. And he lives across the street from this other family that has a teenage daughter. And she's like, he's a creepy stalker and the people don't know. And it's like, does he have something to do with the missing girl? Where's the missing girl? What's going on within this other family? Lisa Jewell always does really nice, intricate family drama, mystery thriller, real creepy kind of books. I really loved The Family Upstairs, I believe it was called. And another Lisa Jewell book I really like was Then She Was Gone, which was really big on creep factors and also involved abduction, kidnapping, young girls in peril, which is always a go-to for a thriller. So I'm excited for Invisible Girl because I think Lisa will continue to deliver the goods. I also randomly picked up Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I've heard really great things about Pachinko and it popped up on my library's available now, read now, limited time to read kind of section they have when you first log on. And I thought, ooh, I've been waiting to read this. It has awards, it's very celebrated. And I, I, I grabbed it. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be drawn in because I'm not really into sort of straighter literary fiction, generational sagas, but I was pulled right in and I'm really enjoying it so far. And it is just a generational, a family saga drama so far. So that's what I think it is about a Korean family and something that happens generations ago that affects all the generations thereafter. And it's very like, clean yet evocative. Excited to read something a little outside my wheelhouse because I generally just go for the thrillers and the young adult and not so much the, you know, literary level fiction, but you know, expand your horizons. And currently on my dog walks, I have been listening to Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. Um, this is a story about a woman who has a dark secret in her past, because don't we all? And she lives in a suburban neighborhood as a mom and is friends with other moms and they have a book club and one meeting, this mysterious new woman comes to the book club and kind of pits the women against each other, getting them to reveal their secrets in drunken fashion, gets them sort of to play a game of never have I ever with monumental consequences. And I'm enjoying it so far. I've listened to about an hour of it, but then it jumps back from the present timeline where our main character has been like, oh my God, this new woman maybe knows my secret to flashing back to revealing the secret. And I have a little bit of an issue with the flashback and there's some strange stuff revolving around like the weight of the main character and how the author talks about it that I find a little icky in a way, but I'm not really sure. It's not bugging me enough to stop listening, but I'm not really sure how I feel about it. But the actual secret was pretty juicy. Also not really feeling how it is doing a split timeline because I didn't realize we were going to be doing a split timeline. So not sure how I feel about it, but 
I'm curious about this mysterious stranger and why she wants to wreak havoc upon our main character's life. So I'm going to keep listening because it's easy to listen to things that you're kind of iffy about when on a dog walk because there's beautiful scenery and cute dogs and you have the time and generosity to let something percolate, see if it cooks into something good. And I recently just finished listening to Shiver by Allie Reynolds. I'll pop the cover right there. And I really love this book. It's a very typical, I'm going to love it based on the setup book. So it's about a group of friends who are all high level snowboarders who 10 years ago had some friendship drama, real drama. One of them went missing. Then 10 years later, they gather together again, only it's not what they seem. No one has been invited by the person they thought they were. Nobody knows who drew them back together at the ski resort. Then of course there are threats, secrets are revealed. Um, people are discussing this missing person from 10 years ago. The story splits between 10 years ago and present day in a really nice way. It only did a little bit of the thing I don't like, which is concealing a big secret just for the sake of storytelling, but I thought it was done in an artful way. Um, and I, I was, I even had like a big oh! moment, which um, with thrillers, even though I enjoy the ride, a lot of the time I'm not getting an oh! moment because I've read so many, I feel like I, I can guess a lot of twists, but this had like a little tweak on a twist where I literally like read it and went, oh! it was very nice. I highly recommend it if you like the whole and then there were none trope. And I like the atmosphere. They're at this um, ski resort and there's the snow and the darkness and the mystery and tension a little bit of romance sprinkled in there too. And of course the murder, or was there a murder? Is there more murder happening? What's going on? Um, so highly recommend Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Finally, we have in the reading nook area, here's Gudetama. It's a lazy egg. If you don't know about him, you should Google him. And he has this great little butt crack. I hope you can enjoy. So this has been an office tour slash what I'm reading recently. So. I will see you next time with another video about reading or writing or something fun. Bye.